This video is going to introduce two new concepts that build off the concepts of uh, linear combination and linear independence that we went over in the last video. The first term is span. So let's say we have n vectors, v1 through vn. We say that the span of these vectors is the set of all vectors that can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors. So any vector v, just some arbitrary vector that can be expressed as a linear combination of vectors v1 through vn, we say this vector is in the span of vectors v1 through vn. You'll sometimes also hear span used as a verb. For example, you may hear the vectors x and y span the plane. And this just means that any vector in the vector space, in this case we're talking about the plane, can be expressed as a linear combination of the given vectors. So any vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors x and y. So we say that x and y span the plane because the span of x and y is the whole plane. x and y span the plane, but so do x and this vector we talked about last time, xy. And we show that any arbitrary vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination of x and xy. And that's another way of saying that x and xy span the plane. Also, I want to point out that you can have vectors that span the plane that aren't linearly independent. So we would be equally correct in saying that the vectors x, y, and x, y span the plane because any vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination of these three vectors, even though having all three is redundant because any two of these also span the plane. An example of a set of vectors that doesn't span the plane would be just the single vector x, for example, because the vector y is in the plane, but there's no way to express y as a linear combination of just the vector x. All right, so that wraps up span. The second term I wanted to talk about is basis. This is an easy concept if you understood the concept of span. A basis is a set of vectors that spans a space and are all linearly independent. So this just removes that redundancy I was mentioning earlier. A basis has to be linearly independent. So it's, in a sense, a minimal set of vectors that span a space. So for example, x and y are basis of the plane because one, they span the plane, but they're also linearly independent. For the same reason, x and xy are also a basis of the plane, but x, y, and xy are not a basis of the plane for the reason that xy is a linear combination of x and y. So these three vectors aren't linearly independent. And x is also not a basis of the plane. And this time for the other reason, it's because x doesn't span the plane. So it can't be a basis. You may have found it odd that earlier I said that the plane is just one example of a vector space. And so you shouldn't rely on it too heavily for your intuition of what vector spaces do because vector spaces are more abstract in general than the plane. But then I went and all the examples we've seen so far have been examples in the plane. And the reason for this is that up until now, we haven't had a good way to define another vector space. So the only vector space we're really all familiar with is the plane. The concept of span gives us a way to define new vector spaces. The span of a set of vectors is a vector space because any vector in that span can be added to any other vector in that span to give yet another vector in the span. So let's just look at an example. Let's say we have three vectors, A, B, and C, and they're all linearly independent. So no vector in this set can be expressed as a linear combination of the other vectors in the set. So 
a new vector space that we haven't seen before is the span of these three vectors. That's a vector space. So any vector that can be expressed as a linear combination of these three is going to be in this new vector space. And just for fun, let's say that the numbers we're defining this vector space over are the complex numbers. So our linear combinations are going to be complex numbers times these vectors plus other complex numbers times these vectors. So an arbitrary vector in this vector space is going to look like some real number a1 plus some real number b1 times the imaginary constant, that whole complex number multiplying the vector a, and so on for the coefficients on b and c. So this vector space, to visualize this, you would need six dimensions. So this is really, truly something new. So from now on, we might be using vector spaces outside of the plane in our examples because now we have a way to define these new vector spaces.